one nil. Just we keep down. Thirteenth in the championship. The takeover happened, as I said it would. People will be. Oh, when when have we got leads? Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. It's time for another Leeds United press conference reaction. I hope you've checked out the preview earlier on. If you haven't already, please make sure you do. We will be live tonight as well, uh, ready for your big match preview live, which will be coming to you around about 9 or 10. Uh, just keep your eyes peeled for that one. And then, of course, tomorrow is match day. Match day is going to look like this, folks. We're going to do... Leicester versus West Brom at half 12 and then jump straight into a Leeds United watch along after that. OK, so wall to wall football early Saturday morning. So make sure you join me on the Just Your Football Show. I hope you are all doing well. Like Danny says, smash a like and subscribe. And like my man Justin says, pay your rent and hit the like. Right. I've just watched the press conference. I was actually doing a video on uh, Moore's channel, Big Up More Gender, uh, earlier on. And then uh, I got a message uh, of someone saying Furpo's out again. And I was like, you fucking kidding me. So then obviously I jumped on Twitter and then I've just watched the press conference there. Uh, Junior Furpo out again. Junior Furpo is out again. He's played 11 minutes of football, managed to get himself some sort of calf strain. And now he's going to be out for three weeks. I'm sick to the back tee for this guy. People will come and say, oh, you're being harsh. People don't like to be injured. Oh, he's not doing this on purpose. Okay, he, uh, right. But I do question the guy's commitment to Leeds United at this stage um, because we have people who are playing through injuries. And I'm not asking, am I asking him to do that? Maybe that's maybe that's silly of me to do it. But I think it's quite mad, like the wording used by Daniel Farker in the presser uh, on Junior Furpo. Um, when he. <laughs> Junior Furpo came to them with a problem, I believe it was. Um, you know, Furpo reported problems with his hamstring. 11 minutes. 11 minutes and he's reported problems with his hamstring. And he, he's reported them. I don't know, listen, I don't know about medicine, physio, injury. I'm not, I'm not trying to say, but, you know, at this point, when when's three weeks take us to January? Get rid of Get rid, buy a new left back, get one in on loan. It's pointless. Um, it's pointless. These rumours about him leaving, listen, there's no smoke without fire. Real Betis have come out and said no, we're not interested in him. But what I'm saying is, this is the same junior Furpo that got leaked to Fabrizio Romano saying that loads of clubs wanted him in the summer. This is what they said, loads of clubs wanted him. He got injured, he was then on the Leeds United pre um Leeds United um, podcast with some pure propaganda that people were lapping up, going, oh, he's such a nice guy. He'd be great at this level. Whenever he's come onto the pitch, he's not looked great at this level. I don't know where it comes from. Um, And, uh, yeah, he's, anyway, oh, I turned down offers and that. Yeah, of course you did, mate. Um, And then we're getting towards January, and then what's happening? More talk, more talk of, um, more talk of him leaving. Um, and then he gets injured after 11 minutes of football. I don't know. Um, I question the guy's commitment, and I don't. I don't think it's it's harsh to do so. Um, because he he can he cannot and will not get fit or can stay fit. I told what did I say? I said on this very show. That I said he would break, like he will get injured again. And what's he played? Not even 90 minutes of football across two games, and he's done. There's no point sending him out on loan stairs because he won't. He, what's he going to do? You're not going to play out on loan either, unless he's in a hotter climate. Listen, it's there in black and white when he did an interview saying he doesn't like football, it's too cold in Yorkshire, wants to go back to Spain. That was last season. Um, And now, you know, we're, we're talking about an injury again. And people will say I'm I'm being harsh and, oh, just because you dislike a player or you've got an agenda, you know, you can't, he's got injured, he didn't mean to get injured, all this sort of stuff. But at this point, at this point, I've seen as well, Damar, I've seen you in the live chat, bro. 
I seen you in the live chat on the presser when I watched it back. And, you know, Damar says, I actually can't back him anymore. I've seen that on Twitter as well. I think it's right to, 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 I know. As someone says, a mysterious hamstring that'll get him very close to the transfer window. Eh? That's what I'm saying. A hamstring injury that's going to see him out for at least three weeks. I can guarantee you now he won't be back in three weeks. I can guarantee you he won't be back in three weeks. You know, um, definitely not. That's not going to happen anytime soon, is it? Three weeks. Where does three weeks take us? I don't think he'll be fit. We won't see him again, hopefully. I'm sorry, that sounds harsh, doesn't it? But I'd rather not see him again, if I'm being totally honest. The guy's rubbish anyway. I shouldn't really be arsed, but I think it's more like... just At this stage, you're taking the piss for me. I think you're taking the piss. Because when he came back, you know, and I said it after the, the other presser, that... Seen it in the other presser that he said, basically, the amount of time he's had off for little strains here and there is similar to an ACL injury, right? And this is where I question commitment. He's got a little tight hamstring. Fuck off. Like, this is my thing. Get in the bin. Get in the bin. It's a good job we didn't need to rely on him. But uh, my, my point is, Sam Byram, who has been plagued with injuries throughout his full career, Right, has come back to Leeds United. He's broken down twice and still been back within a week or so. Thank God. Thank God for Sam Byram. We, we had Pascal Strout go for a double hernia operation. A double hernia operation just, what, three weeks ago? Two weeks ago, even. And my man's now starting again for Leeds United. Junior Firpo plays 11 minutes of football and he's broken down. I think it's mad. I think it's mad. Um, yeah. It is what it is. Um, yeah, just on Davis, I have to agree with Damar a little bit. Yeah, we shouldn't have let him go, but we were in the Premier League. They obviously let him go when they felt we were going to stay in the Premier League. You know, Jesse was manager at the time, he was at the start of the season. I understand it. He went to League One, folks. Let's not forget, he went from a Premier League team to League One. So I have to tend to agree with Damar. Within hindsight, yeah, OK. But we, if we if we were still in the Premier League, we wouldn't be worrying about him. And we should have stayed in the Premier League. That was the plan, right? When they were doing the transfer business, it obviously went shit because the players they brought were shit, didn't suit the system, and the manager was absolutely gash. Um, you know... So there, and like Ben says, rather shocks anyway. I have to agree with you in that respect as well. But yeah, anyway, right. Let me get into uh, let me get into the press conference and the main 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 comments. So obviously asked about the state of the squad. Two out. Joffy hip one game. Joffy at this stage again keeps breaking down himself. Not going to get game time anyway, even when he's fit. Joffy needs to go out on loan in January. He needs to play some men's football. He needs to be starting week in, week out. Tried at Sunderland. I would advocate he needs to go for a League One loan, um, potentially being the main man. Tried it at Sunderland. Ross Stewart got injured. Sunderland fans, whenever I speak to them, no, he, was, he wasn't the one then. Um, disappointed it's gone as it is. Glad we didn't pay a hell of a lot of money for him. Um, I don't know if he'll have a future at Leeds. Look what happened with Sam Greenwood. Sam Greenwood's gone out on loan. He's joint Middlesbrough top scorer. Admittedly, only four goals, but he's been really, really good for them. Really, really good for them. Joffy needs a similar loan. Uh, will he be the main man in the championship side? Maybe down the bottom end? I don't know. Chef Wednesday, could he do bits at Rotherham even? He needs to go get minutes. You know, he needs to go get minutes. So Joffy, for me, should be loaned out in January anyway. So he's not that big of a miss. He's not going to get any minutes, is he? Um, yeah, Junior Firpo. So this is the key point that I took away as well. Daniel Farker said he reported problems with his hammy. You know, he come on, my hammy's hurting. After 11 minutes of football, they've checked it over. Apparently, he's got strain. He's going to be out for three weeks. Like at this stage, get in the bin, sell him. Three weeks takes you to January because <laughs> Junior's three weeks is about eight weeks. You know, like, you know, you've got dog lives, right? One year in dog life is seven in human lives. 
three weeks in juniors injury recovery is eight weeks in a normal, you know, sorry, three weeks of recovery time is eight weeks in, in you know, um, is eight weeks on on uh, juniors recovery time. So, you know, he'll probably, yeah, he did a bit of light training in, after three weeks. Yeah, he's still training with the team. Not that he matters, because I don't want to see him near the team anyway, but it is what it is. He's going to be out. He, I don't think he'll play again. Um, I don't know what that means, Paul. I don't. Thanks for the super chat, bro, but I can't be putting that on the screen, pal. I don't know what you mean. Um, in terms of, he was then asked about the old guard specifically. It was a bit of a strange question, but the 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 guy asked him about Aileen Cooper Dallas old guard um and he mentioned how um luke played at the start uh and scored a goal um you know cooper involved also many many times um he said no worries mate i don't know what it means though paul i don't know what relevance it has bro um he said they've played football uh but yes um it's good to have experience around the squad and keep the the standards high the moral high uh, within within the football club. Um, then he was asked about Luke Aylin and not selecting him because we are seeing we are seeing a, a a change, aren't we? We are seeing a change because now Luke Aylin's not even in the squad anymore. Do you know what I mean? Luke Aylin's not even in the squad anymore. Um, he was asked how difficult it was to not select someone like Luke. And he said, you know, it is the most difficult job. Um, you know, this this isn't FIFA, you know. This isn't FIFA. There's emotion attached to it. Of course there is. Daniel Farker's been a player himself, so he knows the situation that Luke Aylin finds himself in. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it is what it is. And um, he's always open and direct, you know. That's the best way to be. Always open and direct with players, especially when you're when you when you're dropping them. Um, and I don't think we'll see. Him, I don't think we'll see him in the squad again. Do you? Like, do you do you think we'll see Luke Aylin in the squad again? I'm not too sure um, because we now have a dearth of right backs. We've got, you know, we've got. Jed Spence, you've got Archie Gray, you've got Jamie Shackleton that can all play there. So I don't know how, unless there's injuries, Luke Aylin gets back into the squad. Maybe he'll get in at the weekend just because Junior Firpo is now not in the squad, so he can't play on the bench. So there we go. Um, it was asked about the importance of the goal scorers, Piro, Somerville, James and co. Um, uh, Joe says Aileen's good enough for depth at the moment. We always know he's around the corner. I don't. Well, he's like, I would, I would argue at right back. He's now fourth in line. Joe, I think he's fourth in line because I'd go. I'm gonna go Gray because I've not seen seen Spence a lot yet, which will probably upset a lot of people. But I'm gonna go Gray, Spence, Shackleton, Aileen. I know probably Farker would go early in the head of Shaq, but for me, that'd be the fourth. So he's fourth in line, but he's good to have around the place for sure. I don't think he gets a new deal though. Um, so yeah, he was asked about the goals. Piro, Somerville, James. It's a joke. It's a joke forward line that we've got. You know, I did a preview earlier on for Middlesbrough. 41 goal involvements from that front four. 41. That's insane. 41 goal involvements between four players. Somerville, Piro, Rutter and James. It is potent, it is electric and it is the best in the division. By a country mile. By a country mile. 40 goal involvements. So, of course, Daniel Farker's like licking his lips. Of course he is. He did say we can add more goals. You know, he spoke about that striker getting a 30 goal a season striker or do you share the goals about? Well, we're sharing the goals about. That's clear to see. Um, but. He did say we can add more goals, more so from the defensive positions, spoke about set pieces. How many times have we seen Crichton get into decent areas and head the ball wide? You know, 
Pascal Strauch, he's good at getting on the ends of ball. He just needs to learn how to fucking head it in the right direction. You know? That's why we 50p head Crichton, angle head. He wants it to go that way, it goes that way. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I get where Farker's coming from because he's probably looking at, you know, reviews of games saying could have scored there. We have, right? How many times have, could we have scored from set pieces? When it's on the floor, Strauch's no bother. But when it's in the air, Rodon hasn't really... The only one that has is Cooper. Ailing got one from across, but that wasn't a set piece. But Cooper's... Rodon doesn't seem to get on the end of him. The only one that does for me from defensive positions is Strauch, but he can't head the ball. Sam Byram is a great header of the ball. So maybe is it a case of trying to pick out a man working on that in the training ground? But definitely more goals from, from defensive positions and more goals from set pieces, really. Um, you've got to play the percentages, right? He was asked about how how do you keep um how do you keep players in such good form? Um, you know, keep them at the same level. He was asked about Cree. We we've seen out the hot form Cree's in the hot forms in Somerville's, they're all in hot form. And is it any wonder when you've got 40 goal involvements between your front four? <laughs> in front of goal, these are just electric. The best in the division. We are the best team in the division. We will be top two by January. We will get promoted. I'm under no illusions. I'm genuine. I'm genuine when I say this. And people can clip it up. And if it doesn't turn out to be the case, then I'm wrong. But for me now, like, you know, I got a message off a certain uh, Leicester fan the other day saying, Rutter is phenomenal, mate. I said, best in the division. He conceded. I said, best in the division. He went, oh, I'm not saying that top five. I went, name me who's better than him. And he went, no comment. Because they're not. You know, we've gone from a poor August to now being the team. This is why I didn't understand the inconsistency thing. I guess you're expected to win every game. That's just not logical. It's not. It's illogical to think we can to, to win every game. But for me now, if you look at it, if you watch teams, if you watch... On our day, we are the best in the division. We are the most informed team in the division. I do not fear anyone in the division. We've got the best manager for the job. We've got the best front four with two players on the bench in Jaden Anthony and Nonto that would walk into any other championship side. That includes Leicester. <laughs> yeah, yo, Damar, you bang on. Judge me after August. Well, if we take August out, Right. If we take August out of our season, we are by far and a stretch the best team in the division. There isn't even a debate about that. Like genuinely, there's not. I, I, just to just to put it into like to give you an idea of what August looked like. Right. If we dial it all the way back to August, yeah. During that month, we drew with Cardiff, we lost to Birmingham, we drew with West Brom, we beat Ipswich. So in that month, we only won one game of football in the league. One. We lost one and drew two, right? You play them fixtures again now. We beat Cardiff at home. You know, we're on, we've won six on the spin. We beat West Brom at home as good as they have been. So in that one month, right, we drew two games. We've only drawn five all season. We lost one, we've only lost three all season. Do you know what I mean? So if you if you take up that month, it's it's mental how good we were, how good we are now, you know? Nah, Tom, they haven't, but when you think about it though, they, they, their positions are apart from Kamara and Purdue's not there to get involved in the goals, if we're being honest. Kamar more so the assists or or pre assists, if you like. You know, um, I don't think there's any worries about Joseph going out on loan, mate. He'll stay with the under-21s. It's those that are knocking on the door or are in that, are in that, um, you know, that limbo zone between first team and thingy. So, Joffy, yeah, there's no, I don't even think there's a worry that Joffy, uh, sorry, that Joseph could go out on loan for me. Um, so how do you keep players in such good form? We've we digressed a little bit, but he mentioned about training on the pitch, uh, managing their load, keeping a winning mentality within the group, but we can always improve. And he, and he also said this, and again, I'm going to bring it back to Furpo. He says the player has to have this fire burning inside them also. They want to play, they want to improve. 
And again, because, and you know, I've got an agenda. I don't rate him. I think he's took us for a ride. I don't hide that fact. You know, how long have we been saying this about this guy? You remember the midweek fix with Lewis, um, JT and Max? You remember that? That was ages ago. I was saying that then, and we're still saying it now, on the 1st of December 2023. So, yeah, I do have an agenda. But I feel that my agenda's backed up with facts. He's going to be out for three weeks, even. By fair post standard, that's about eight weeks. Um, but, yeah, he does not have that fire that we've seen from, you know, from a Somerville to want to stay at the football club and do well. So, from an, from a Stroud, you know, from a from a Byron who get injured and then two minutes later are ready to play again. He does not have that fire burning inside. Um, he was asked about there being young leaders. I, I found this bit quite interesting and, and it will have will have set the cat amongst the pigeons, if you like, because he was asked if there were young leaders and he says yes, people lead different way, but he always said they must lead to the they must always look to the older players. He says, and I quite liked it. He said, in any situation, Luke Ayling is always right. Even if he's wrong, to a younger player, he is right. We'll discuss it. At, we, he said, we will then go away and discuss it afterwards. But on the pitch, they have that seniority, which I don't know how I feel about it. Because then you've got the penalty situation. Because it, basically, Daniel Farker said, this is our values. If Luke Ayling is right, if Luke Allen says something, he's right, even if he's wrong. You know, this is what he said, and he said, this is our values. We can discuss it after. But, yeah, Damar, this this, this was my, my point as well, pal. Maybe that's why Strout didn't go over and say, no, give it some of it. So I don't know how I feel about that. Michael, you would have to think it does, of course, yeah. I would put him in that same bracket. Um, that seniority thing. I said to you on the watch along the other day, it annoys me when he's throwing his arms about. But, yeah, that that is frustrating for me. I don't know how I feel about it. I liked it because I was like, yeah, 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 I like that, you know. Um, Luke Ayling's right, even if he's wrong. But then at the same time, I'm like, hmm. But at least they discuss it afterwards. But, yeah, obviously he does value leaders and seniority and experience. And that's why it is important to have it. For sure, but then you have the penalty situation that we had. So, um, yeah, one to ponder, one to think about. Um, Greenwood loan, any regrets? Um, he basically said, you know, we're, we're happy you progressed in the right way. When you loan a player out, you have two targets. Either he comes back to improve your squad or to increase his value. Um, and look, I don't know if we increase his value because we wanted to sell it. We've, we've put in a 1.5 million clause. I think Borough snapped that. So I'm not sure about that, but maybe it was to get a sale. We're going to get that sale now. That's the main thing. We are going to get money on Sam Greenwood due to his performances. Uh, and, and Daniel Farker said, listen, it's definitely the right decision. He's not concerned. I know some Leeds fans, oh, why did we do it? But I thought this was quite key. He basically said he is the best free kick taker I have ever worked with. He has said he'd be second to no one if he was in my squad now. We all know how good he is at set pieces. But he did say this isn't American football. You can't just sub on a kicker. In other words, saying, he basically said to show these skills on the pitch, you need to be on the pitch. In other words, Sam Greenwood, Sam Greenwood's not good enough to play in our side, if we're being honest, right? If we're being honest, Sam Greenwood's not good enough to start week in, week out for the side. So as good as he is at free kicks... Unless you're playing American football, when you could sub in your kicker and say, right, you take this. There's no use in him being good on free kicks because he's never on the pitch to take them. Do you see what I'm saying? So I get what he's... Um, yeah, like Vic says, maybe it is a fair price. Maybe it is a fair price. I don't know. Um, yeah, potentially. Uh, we'd have paid next to nothing for him anyway, if, if, if indeed we, uh, you know, paid anything at all. Yeah, exactly. And Michael, you would have to say this about the likes of Joffy and Co as well. Uh, Joffy was, we all believe, one of the best prospects, you know, likened to Rooney and that. But I think the only comparison to Rooney is that he's stocky and scouse. Outside of that, there is no uh, there is no comparison. Dallas, Stuart Dallas, no closer to being seriously in contention. 
just back in individual training. Again, people won't like to hear this. I don't think we'll see Dallas again. I think the only time we see Dallas is in the Cups because I'm expecting Leeds to get promoted. He's not going to feature in the Premier League. I love Dallas. I'd love him to stay on in some capacity. I'd love, I'd love a coaching trio of Aileen, Dallas and Cooper. That would be amazing. Coaching the young lads coming through, all that sort of jazz. But I just don't see how Dallas can fit in because I don't think he's ever going to get to a level to be able to play this season. OK, maybe he will. Maybe I'm wrong. But we're going to be fighting for promotion. So does he want to throw him in? Probably not. Um, so I don't see how Stuart... And then if we do get promoted, you've got to be moving on from someone like Stuart Dallas for me, personally. Um, he was asked about Spence. Was, was he... Did he want to play him? And he said, yeah, you know, I thought about it in the final stages of the last game. But Strout got cramp. If you remember rightly, at the time I was going, oh, why have we made that? So why are you bringing on Cooper? And then people said, Joe, I think, you know, Strout's got cramp. And that was why. So maybe Spence would have got minutes. But he did mention about Spence's quality is great going forward and all that, all that sort of stuff. And then I started to question... Does he rate Gray higher than Spence from a defensive standpoint? And I just thought it was worth maybe mulling over because he did say Gray is very good, very good defensively. Spoke about his great work against wingers. There's been a compilation put out. You know, I've been banging this drum that he can play right back. Some will disagree, but he's been phenomenal for me. And he did mention how attack minded Spence is. So then I started to think, does he prefer Gray when playing better sides? When playing, and I know there's no sort of data for me to compare that with because Spence hasn't been fit. So we can't, but just read in between the lines a little when he mentioned how good he was defensively and how, you know, Spence is great going forward. It made me think, hmm, I don't think Spence walked straight back in. And nor should he, because Gray's been phenomenal. I think we'd all prefer Spence to be playing. I, I, I've not seen Spence, so I can't say that, and I love Gray. His day will come soon. Yes, he did say, and left a little nugget there, so maybe he plays against Borough. But, hmm, it's going to be one to, to... I know Spence has been injured, man. I know that, but I'm just... I'm not... My point is, from reading between the lines, I'm not convinced... That say against Borough, he starts him. I think he's going to keep faith with Gray. And then maybe when we go to opposition towards the lower end of the league, he might throw him in. But against better sides, I think he I think he uh I think he keeps Gray in. Yeah, Jamie, fair play. Shouldn't probably start him so soon, but I think we'd all like to see him. So yeah. There you go. Um, do we still have a leadership group? No, Fark has done away with that. But it's clear that the older you are, if you've got experience, you know, you've got you've got seniority, <laughs> doing uh Cody Cody uh Connor Cody vibes, isn't he? Doing card tricks and telling jokes. <laughs> um yeah, so listen, that was your presser. Main main talk away. Main key key takeaway, sorry, is that junior football's broken again. Um, you know, we've I mean we got 11 minutes out of him last time um, and he's broken down again. I mean, his injury, his injury uh, record is a, is, is, is a joke, really. Um, I mean, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. It's bad crack. I don't wish no injuries on anyone, but I have to question the, uh, the commitment of the lad. I mean, this is one of, this is a graphic look. If you just look at him uh, since he's come, uh, hamstring, ligament, hamstring, muscle, knee, muscle, hip, muscle, hamstring, collateral ligament, knee injury, knee. Like, he's never fit. Um, he's missed a lot more games than that as well. I'm not having that he's just missed, what, four and then four. He's missed a hell of a lot more games there. It's our fault for buying him, I guess. It's our fault for buying him. Um, at this at this stage, he's just, he's just picking up money, isn't he? You know, he's just picking up money. So the sooner we get to January, and can, well, you can't even sell him. Just release him at this point. I think for me, I'd just release release him. 
I think it's mad. You know, he's played 11 minutes and he's out for three weeks. It's mad. It really is mad, you know. Um, so all those people said he'd be good at this level. They don't even get the opportunity to see if he's good at this level because uh, he do not want to play football. You know what I mean? I'm convinced at this point he does not want to play football. Leeds United signed him in 21-22 and, you know, he's, he's barely played at all. First season he played 24 times. 19 last season and then three so far this season. Um, yeah. He's a dud. And um, prefers the treatment table, hates the cold and all that sort of jazz. How much did we pay for him? About 12 million or something? Was it 18? I can't remember. Dog dirt and get rid. Um, for sure. Listen, um, I have... Um, I have done a preview pre-recorded to Middlesbrough some quite interesting stats in there as well um they haven't beat us in 10 years the last time they beat us was in February of 2013 February in 2013 folks so the odds are forever in our favor when it comes to this fixture uh I'm expecting us to beat them please check out that preview I'll be live again tonight as well for a big match preview live between nine or ten uh so so make sure you watch that thanks always for watching um we will be live in the morning as well 12 25 because we're going to do west brom versus leicester city then as soon as that's finished we're going to scooch on over onto uh leeds versus middlesbrough which is your three o'clock kickoff so plenty of football for you in the morning hopefully west brom do us a favor we beat borough and then we, you know, we 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 catch them up. I'm not sure who Leicester have got. Uh, sorry, you Ipswich have got. Let me have a look. Um, Ipswich have got Coventry at home. I expect Ips, Ipswich to win, but I'm, I think West Brom could do could do a job on Leicester. To be honest, good side beat Ipswich. If they beat them, yeah, they, they'd actually overtake us in the league. Uh, no, they'd be on the same points as us actually, but then they'll score a goal, so they'd probably be. Ahead of us a goal difference, but I don't mind that because it means Leicester are closer to us if we get three points, you know. Let's not forget the gap's just eight now. And I'll still come back to it. I'll still come back to it. Had we have lost to Leicester, the gap would have been 17 points. 17. No, a draw would not be nice. No, 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 no. Let West Brom win. We need to we need to pull them in. We need to pull them in. We don't just want a point. I want to pull them in. Yeah, they do, Georgie. No doubt you'll be here in the morning. It'd be good to see you here. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Make sure you join us tonight for the live, and I'll see you in the morning if you can't be there. All right, peace out. Love you all. Thank you for the support as always.